Hello everybody and welcome back to Talk of the Town. And I don't even have to probably introduce you because <laughs> all these fine folks at home, they know you well oh, by now. This is, I'm here with Eileen Marr, our movie reviewer. I think it's a critic. No, I'm not a critic. Because you're not very critical. You, no. You, no, I don't have the education to be a critic. But well, I don't know about that. But <laughs> it's been a while since we had Eileen on the show. We, we had those, all the, the foundation of education and a lot, a lot of things happened, yeah, you know. And so... Um, Eileen called me up. She said, Brian, can we just do the whole show on movie <laughs> reviewing and everything? I mean, she has completely taken over. Matter of fact, probably next month on Milton Kelly, you'll probably see a show, the movie reviewer. And then there won't be a Brian Kelly. It'll be just hosted by Eileen Marks. Oh, no. I'll always bring you along with me, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are again. And she told me she, she's at lots of stuff to go over today. Yeah. But I have to tell everyone at home, I got a call from one of our viewers. And... Um, she went out and bought the movie The Big Red One. Teresa Stafford. Teresa Stafford <laughs> bought her husband, Brian, the movie The Big Red One oh, because great. of your movie review. Oh, so that, that, I just, makes me, that makes me very happy. Just wanted you to know that. That's so. what I like to hear. Has and, he seen it, do you know? Has he, uh, I don't think he's sorry. <laughs> but, that, <laughs> oh, but, well. but she's confident he's going to like it. So. <laughs> I think he will. I don't think All right. Well, these like people, it. they haven't been to the movies yep. in two months now because oh. they've been waiting for what you recommend. Yeah, so. well, it has been a couple of months, so I've... I've seen a lot of movies in that time. The kids were on vacation. It was my birthday. I was away for the weekend. I dragged Tom to a Happy bunch of birthday. movies. Happy birthday. Oh, Thank you took you. Tom? Someone yeah. went with you. Yeah, oh, I didn't good. Go by myself. Nice. To all of them, anyway. But I know last time we talked, I was looking forward to seeing Aragon, and that's the yes. first movie I'm going to talk about. And I saw it. I'm not going to tell oh. you what I thought about oh, it. I saw it in Canada, but this go ahead. This is the first, I think, a movie that I'm going to review that you've actually seen. This will be interesting. Uh, oh, we moved our set around, you notice, because it's getting dark, and we wanted you to be able to see us. This is better light over here, so. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to start with Aragon. And Aragon is a film based on Christopher Paolini's first book in a planned trilogy. And um, the big thing about Christopher Paolini is that I think he was about 15 when he started writing. <coughs> I started me. writing at 14. Um, but <laughs> Writing these books. Um, and, and that's just an incredible feat. I mean, I've read, I read Aragon. Um, I can't say it was a favorite of mine. I did like it. Um, it's Harry Potter-ish, but not as good as Harry Potter. But when you think it was a 15-year-old boy that did it, it's, it's right. incredibly impressive. Anyway, um, the film follows the exploits of Aragon, a young boy, and his beloved dragon, Safira. Uh, the story is a melding of all the great sci-fi films that the young author must have been exposed to because Aragon is part Luke Skywalker, part Harry Potter. He's an orphan living with an uncle and a cousin. And there are also, um, I don't know, ghosts of the Lord of the Rings trilogy hovering about as the monsters in the rural, rugged countryside uh, become as much a character in the film as the boy and the dragon. The film's directed by first-time feature director, 46-year-old um, Texan, Stefan Fangmeier, who, this is his very first feature oh, film. Oh, the name, Fangmeier. Yeah, I know, okay. I thought that was kind of incredible. Um, but previously, he has only done visual effects editing and directing, and he um, was involved in the Lemony Snicket film, and one of my absolute favorites, Master and Commander Far Side of the World, the Russell Crowe um, yeah, Swashbuckler, which was a great film if you've never seen that. Anyway, Aragon is played by an 18-year-old British boy named Ed Spilliers, and he's a very, very handsome young man. I think he's definitely going to be you know, one of those Tiger Beat favorites. Um, Good-looking kid. He's a decent actor. And he captures Aragon's young ineptitude and then rising courage and conviction perfectly. This is his first big movie. Um, he's, a, as I said, a pleasure to look at, so it's nice to know we'll see him in the next two installments of the planned trilogy. Uh, Paolini's second book, Eldest, was published in 2005, so I can imagine um, that they'll be filming that pretty soon. Have you soon. read that yet? I haven't read that uh, one, but Aragon made a, a good amount of money. I forget how much it made, but it, it made plenty. Mm -hmm. So they definitely, it'll go into, uh, they'll be happy to do the next two, I'm sure. The veterans Jeremy Irons and John Malkovich lend weight to the film, although Malkovich seems like he was still in rehearsal and had only recently received his lines. He was stiff and more laughable than uh, the scary villain, I think, that he was supposed to portray. And Jeremy Irons, he's a worthy and true friend to Aragon at a time in his life when he has no one. Safira is Aragon's beautiful sapphire dragon, and she is really the true star of the film. She's breathtaking uh, in flight and I, breathtaking I she dragon, is, fire breathing here we go. dragon. <laughs> breath. Did you hear that? Breathtaking. She is. She's beautiful. Um, and Rachel White's of uh, constant Gardner fame and the Mummy. I don't know if you know Rachel White, but so she's a great actress. She is the voice of. You're Safira. starting to get to know me, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't even know. ask. You don't know. <laughs> 
Um, but she's the voice of Sophia, and I have to say, even though I really like her and she's a great actress and she does a good job, I think that this beautiful dragon deserved a richer voice, and I, that to me was a little bit of a drawback oh. to the film, that she wasn't voiced as she should have been. Um, and the theme song I thought was kind of interesting is sung by Avril Lavigne, and that's probably her biggest hit in ages, Hold On. It's a, it's a nice song. It goes well with the, with the film. Again, I went, I, I saw it. Did I love it? No, I didn't love it. Did I like it? Yeah, it was okay. Um, none of the kids have seen it yet. Tom actually went with me. He loved it. So maybe I thought you were going to take Tom to the R-rated movie, so you <laughs> take him to the kid movie. <laughs> Movie, though. Well, I think PG, were, you know, it's, it was P, PG. I don't think it was PG-13. Right. And it is violent, and it does um, have some definitely scary scenes of peril, and the boy, you know, is, is alone. Right. So it's a little bit scary. But it was good, and it, you know, it, it ends. It doesn't quite leave you hanging, even though, you know, you can't. You, you are looking forward to the next installment. So it was a good one. Now, you saw it. We Let's feel the same. Say. We're saying. Yeah. Did, did a, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was entertaining. The kids enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But yeah. It wasn't magnificent. It wasn't Lord of the Rings. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, but and I think that's a good point. I think we're, we're in an age where we're, you know, we're spoiled. Ago, we, there weren't that many great sci-fi uh, and fantasy films out. And all of a sudden, we have a glut of, right. we've got Harry Potter. We had the blog. We've got, we've the blog. The blob. Blob. Yeah, blob. The yeah. Blob. That, that was that scary. Was, and the tomato, the big tomato. <laughs> and what was the other one? The six-foot woman, the 60-foot woman. <laughs> I don't know. I just remember right, the man. blob. <laughs> we didn't have anything like they have today. Um, so it's, it is nice. To be able to be picky now, we can say we saw something. Right. Yeah, it was okay, but it's not as good as Harry Potter. It's not as good as Lord of the Rings. You right. can't really compare anything to. But Lord you of the almost Rings. wanted to support it because of the you kid do. that you did it. You do. You definitely want to support it, the, and, and I'll right. definitely see the next one. And, and I would recommend it. I would definitely and, say it's and worth. And my worth children seeing. read both the, both those books, and, uh, and did they like them? And the fact that it was written by someone young, I think, inspired yeah. them to re want to read exactly. it. So yeah, it's, so that's incredible. I, I did. I enjoyed it very much, and I would recommend it. It's, I don't think it's any. It's not longer out in um, in the theaters, yeah. but it'll be on video really, really so. soon. Okay, next, we're going to start to talk about a couple of Academy Award nominees. Um, I did get to see The Queen, uh, which is up for Best Picture Oscar. It's directed by um, Britain, uh, British um, director Stephen Frears of Dangerous Liaisons fame. High Fidelity, I don't know if you ever saw that one with uh, John Cusack. And they made that into a play. That was a play in town not too long ago in oh, I, I missed it. <laughs> well, anyway, it purports to tell the world just what the Queen and the royal family were doing during the days right after Princess Diana's death. Oh, wait a minute. Who's the... Helen Mirren. Oh, I saw, her, I saw a review about it. Yeah. I saw her on TV. Oh, you saw her on TV? Oh, she then is then we, funny. We talk a little bit she about it. She is funny. Good. She was she on is. 60 Minutes. She's a funny woman. She's, you know, she's yeah. an older woman, and yeah. she just... She's having a great year. She, um, she... She looks like the queen. She looks... I mean, oh, yeah. like, um, I really almost felt as if I was watching a documentary because she so vividly captures the queen's mannerisms, the queen's... Um, in, you know, her voice her and her look is flawless. Oh, I mean, yes, you put yes. them side by side, it was flawless. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it stars Helen Mirren, who's got to be late 60s now, maybe even maybe 68, 69. And she is nominated for an Academy Award for her role. The Queen, the film itself, is up as Best Picture. Um, and, you know, not only does she capture the Queen, but she captures that the aloofness of the monarchy. You know, the whole world, and especially Britain at that time, the outpouring of grief, people in the streets. England had never seen anything like that before. You know, the British, very quiet and, and stoic. And all of a sudden, everyone's out in the streets, and there's, you know, flowers all over Buckingham Palace. Yet the Queen was, you know, they went to Balmoral in Scotland. They thought it would be best to get the boys away, which, you know, I can't argue with that. I mean, children, I can't imagine what would happen if, God forbid, something happened to Tom or me. I can see, yeah, you want to get the kids away from right. that. The British people took it as um, almost a sign of offense, that they mm -hmm. never liked Diana anyway, and they're glad that she's dead. No and you get to see the inner workings. And, of course, I don't know where they get this information. It's conjecture, I'm sure. From the tabloids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it does show a nice... It shows, that, yeah, she's a tough lady, she's a tough old bird, but she's just doing what she's been bred to do, basically, for hundreds right. of years. She's a, sure. She is the queen, and this is, how the, this is how the queen acts. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter that right. the world has changed. This is how we act. But we do get to see um, her being very uh, official. She gets to meet you know, Tony Blair as he's become the new prime minister. Tell them, do you? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm talking to you, Brian. <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, she meets Tony Blair and how she's very, very um, you know, stoic with him, and then... He leaves and she, her true feelings come out, oh gosh, you know, another prime minister, how many more do I need to meet? And it was kind of fun because the film feels like we're getting a sneak peek at just what goes on with the London royals. And the portrait is, again, as I said, at times flattering and at other times brutally unkind. Uh, emotions are always kept in check. 
and the film, when dealing with the queen and her family, always feels controlled. On the flip side, the brief glimpses we get into the life of newly elected Prime Minister um, Tony Blair and his family, they feel open, they feel warm, they're inviting. So, you know, we're seeing a, a political statement, I don't know what we're saying. Of course, Tony Blair certainly come from the highs all the way down to the lows from the time that this took place. He was sure. it. He was the man. I mean, people loved him. Can't say the same anymore. Um, and the thought that struck me was, well, I'd really like to see a film about Tony Blair in the first few, maybe, maybe the first year or two of mm. his um, time as prime minister. His wife, I, I, I should have wrote down the woman who plays her, she is hysterical. She's a real firecracker. And, you know, that's a family that I always found very interesting. They didn't live, um, you know, typically where the prime minister lives. They kept their house and they show scenes of the house. And it looks like my house because there's, you know, pictures on the refrigerator. There's stuff on the floor and you're thinking this is the most powerful man in Britain and he's just an average guy and don't forget it wasn't too long after he was elected that his wife who was 45 years old at the time they had another child <laughs> I can't imagine can you imagine President Bush having another child in office today huh? <laughs> but um, again it was a good movie I enjoyed it um, again I don't know where they got the information for it you know did somebody on the inside pen this I don't know now it's funny see now all the other movies you didn't ask, where did they get the information for I this? Know. Why are you being so well, critical? I couldn't find it. I couldn't find out where. I couldn't find out where. Now, they... did they say that this is based on a true story? No, but, they it, say... but it is. It's based on the events of did Diana's they, did death. Did they say No, they don't say that. Uh, so they don't say you're jumping to a lot of conclusions <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, it was good. I, I mean, I liked it. Again, I, it's up for best picture. Do I think it was the best picture of the year? Not by a long shot. Do I think Heron, Helen Mirren deserves an Academy Award? Yeah, probably. She was really good. She was great. But we'll see. All right, so that was the queen.